And that's what it looks like when it's all put together. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this awesome burner stand for your alcohol stove. Stay tuned. As many of you already know, I'm a big fan of alcohol stoves. And this is a little pop can stove I made. As a matter of fact, as you can see here, quite a few years ago, and uh, I've used it, and it, it works great. It's held together for a lot of years, and uh, these have a lot of instructional videos on YouTube, so unless I just get a whole lot of requests to show you how I make one, uh, I'll probably not do that on camera. However, one of the problems with this type of stove is finding a proper burner, some kind of a pot support that this can go down in, as well as something that is pretty decent at keeping the wind away and you also want something that's lightweight and cheap and relatively easy to make so I've got something just like that to show you now this is not original to me I got this from a channel called the good advice channel and I'll make sure and put a link to the channel down in the description box uh, as well as to the video but uh, anyway, I watched it. I thought it was fantastic. It's exactly like the kind of thing that I want to bring to you all. And so let's get started. You just need some simple things. First of all, your pop can stove. You need to make sure that it fits down inside of the can like that. It's very important. Next, you're going to want to get some kind of a Sharpie. This is actually a Milwaukee Inksol, but we call them Sharpies because it's basically what it does. And this one is made for marking on metal and such. So I like to use this a lot for my projects. The next item, of course, is my Fiskars snips and I've used these on a lot of other projects. I like them because they're needle nose and it really helps me get into tight places and cut around curves and corners. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I match up the bottom of this can with my burner. I want these burner holes to be up above where my burner stand is so that they can get air etc. Alright so if we can look here you can see that about two ribs up is about as deep as I really need it to be so we'll go to about the third one so we can make that mark here so we count one two three so that rib right there okay so now that we have that marked we can just go ahead and go all the way around the can following that groove and that's going to help us make sure that we don't cut any farther than that when we're making this project all right so now what we need to do is we need to mark for our pot stands and the way you want to do this is you just want to take and you just want to draw some lines you don't want them to be really thick but maybe an inch wide or so and you just come up and again this is not rocket science but you want to come across here and I like to make some marks on the other side so I try to keep them as even as possible again it doesn't have to be perfect all right we're gonna do that again so we just take this and we'll mark up and we'll mark up so we have two now on each side and then we're just going to kind of split the difference over here we'll do the same thing and you don't have to make these super straight we'll straighten it out with the snips all right and then come here and here all right so we've got four all the way around now we just take the snips and we cut each one of these lines I'll do that and I'll get back with you. You should now have something that looks like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out every other one of these that we marked. Now leaving the lines that we made. So we'll just come in here and we'll cut right along this groove just like this. We'll cut that off. Okay, so we have an opening like that. And then we just go around every other one. Now you'll have something that looks like this. The next thing that we're going to do, using our Sharpie, we're going to count up these ribs here, not counting the one where this line is, but we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and make a mark. And you want to do that all the way around so that you make sure you get this at the exact same height. This is where our bend is going to be. So it's very important that we get those all exactly the same. Now. We want to bend these in and I would recommend for most people that you use gloves. Um, my hands are pretty tough and so I'm fairly used to it but you have to be very very careful but you want to go ahead and fold this in on that line very very careful fold all the way down and then I find it's useful 
to take a pair of pliers and kind of help crimp this on that line to get that a little bit more accurate. Now if you've done this right, they should all be the same height. And that is very important because we want the pot to set level. I like to pinch this right here and put a little bit of a curve on the top of this stand. I found out that this seems to work pretty good. And you can do this, of course, using some pliers. You can do it with finger strength. If your fingers are strong enough, just finger strength will be enough. Just kind of turn this in a little bit. Just turn it a little bit. And uh, add a little bit of extra strength. All right. Now, we simply take the stove and we push it down in there to the bottom. And that's what it looks like. As you can see, just the burner holes are sticking above the top. Now a little tip for you when it comes to burning an alcohol stove in the daytime, put just a little bit iodized table salt, just a little bit in there. And that will help change the chemical composition of the alcohol just enough that it helps it to burn visibly because alcohol burns clear. And this is denatured alcohol and I would recommend using only that and I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with about an ounce or so and I have my ounces marked on the back. I do have to periodically remark them because it ends up being just a little bit difficult to keep on there. The alcohol wants to wipe the Sharpie off. All right, so there we go. And now to light it, just simply take our lighter. And there we go. And we are lit. And in just a little bit, the flames will start to become visible. And in just a few seconds, with the salt in there, it changes the chemical composition just enough that we get a nice orange flame instead of the typical blue flame that you see that it's practically invisible in the daytime. And this is a great help. I also like this system because it keeps you from spilling alcohol everywhere. It stays inside of the can. It's cheap and it's easily replaceable as well. All right, and of course it takes a little while for it to heat up and come out the burner, but we're gonna go ahead and place the cup on top, and this is an absolute perfect size for this type of cup, for your Stanley cook set or anything like that. So to show you how flame proof it is, that's pretty impressive. Most alcohol stoves will easily go out, but with this little burner and pot stand arrangement, it works remarkably well. I'm really pleased with it. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take great survival and bushcraft training classes here at our facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.